Check it out, day one. Day one of tracking of LP10, or whatever we end up calling it. We are at the studio right now, beautiful studio, have our drums set up, uh, are getting everything kind of tuned and tightened up, going through everything that we have. And we're gonna get ready to track here in a few minutes. Um, kind of cool, a lot of people might not know this, but when we go to record, uh, at least with drums, we try to use different kinds of drums. I have all different snare drums I use. Uh, you know, live I'll use one kit the whole tour or whatever, but here uh, you want different options because maybe different songs want different sounds. So different cymbals, different snares. You want to talk about snares? I'm sure everybody here knows what a snare drum is, but if you don't, it's that one in the middle. It's the drum in the middle that you pretty much hit more than any other drum there is. It's like the meat and potatoes of the kit. So I own a whole bunch. Um, Live, I use uh, SJC drums, they're amazing drums, but uh, when I go into the studio, the world is my oyster. I own a lot of vintage snares, because there's just something cool about some of these older snares that you just can't recreate. So when we first started recording, and like not just you know at our friend's studio, but real recordings in nice studios, we would always rent drums, because there would be like a studio drum tech that kind of had this cool collection of drums and stuff, and he would rent them to us. And I started noticing that they would rent certain kind of snares over and over. Like this guy, this Acrolade right here. We would always rent something like that. We'd always have some kind of like hand hammered or this Black Beauty type snare. And so after a little while, I would, I actually became friends with the drum tech and asked him, I was like, hey, can I get these? And he's like, well, yeah, I mean, they don't make them new anymore. Some of these they do, but most of them they don't. But you can try to find them at vintage stores or online or something like that. And so. I started buying them because why rent them over and over when you can just have them? So again, I don't use any of these. Well, some of these I use live, but most of them I don't use live. They're just for the studio. But every single one does sound different, and I will use a different snare on almost every single song. Uh, this drum, I call it the Pinup Girl Snare. It was actually made by a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Rhino, Jeff, is Jeff Newman, I guess. Uh, modern classic drums, kind of a one-of-a-kind snare. We have it tuned very high. Anybody who's ever heard of the band Snapcase will know that that's reminiscent of that. And uh, Steve Evitz, who's producing our record, produced that record. So that's where that came from. This is a uh, company called Ludwig, which everybody knows. It's an Acrolyte snare. It's aluminum, super light. Um, sounds awesome. We've used this snare on a lot of our records. Uh, SJC snares. This one is made out of titanium. Uh, you actually cannot get this exact shell anymore. Um, I believe it's military grade titanium um, and the military said nobody gets it for snare drums we want to use it for military stuff. So that's that. This is a very standard uh, it's called a Black Beauty. Um, anybody who plays drums has probably heard of these drums and uh, yeah they're used on countless records. Um, going through some more. Lots of stuff on this one but this is a uh, it's a Ludwig as well it's a Supraphonic. It's also called hand hammered because if you look in there there's a whole bunch of hammer marks. Um, surprisingly, does sound different than all the rest of these. Um, this guy is one of my favorite snares. It's a company called Tama. Uh, this is a deep snare. It's 8 by 14. It's a Tama Superstar. A snare just like this was used on a song called November Rain by a band called Guns N' Roses. And the person who owns that snare worked on some of our older records. And he was the one who told me about this snare. I nickname it um, Big Red even though that's the same name as his drum, but I like it. So, another SJC snare. This one's cool, it's made out of aluminum. All these metals surprisingly do sound different, so every snare does sound different. We have another SJC snare here. It's just really cool, not only does it look cool with the zebra wood, but it's also shorter. It's a four inch snare. So I would just call this my zebra stripe snare. And it's got the old, older SJC wood badge. And then, Save the best for last. What's actually on the kit right now, and what I'm gonna use most likely first on this record, if you can see it in here, it's by a company called Tama, uh, much like that big red snare. It is a bell brass snare, and so you won't be able to translate this on film. This snare weighs almost 20 pounds, which is probably two to three times heavier than any of those snares, um, and you can kind of feel that when you hit it. This uh, snare, not exact snare, but something just like this, was used on a Metallica Black album, Rage Against the Machine, their first record, I believe some of the Deftones records, System of a Down, stuff like that. The, uh, the bell brass, at least from like the late 80s, was nicknamed the Terminator for good reason. And this one is special because it's got um, bronze hoops 
that these hoops are like a thousand dollars a piece. Um, so I've used this on countless Newfound Glory songs as well. And uh, yeah, the drum kit I'm using is an older Gretsch drum kit that I've owned for a long time, but I do have my SJC 18 inch Tom here. So that's overload on drums, but that's what we do. Drums is uh, a lot more than just plugging in something and playing. You definitely want it to sound cool. You put tons of microphones on it, and it's probably one of the most involved, yet one of the most, uh, I think, uh, cool aspects about recording, because this is where you do get to pull out all the, all the fun stops. So we will combine all, whatever, 16 or so of these microphones and make it into one. Uh, you put a microphone back here. I don't know what that's recording. The mic's probably not gonna smell good by the end of the recordings, but oh well, it'll sound good. Have fun. Thanks, bye. So I am making progress chart because <clears throat> you know you had a lot to do in the studio you know recording parts drums guitars bass vocals backing vocals gang vocals flamethrowers lunch boxes I can't slump this one. anyway so this is uh the song we always have a fun chart this is the song list these are the songs horror movies which is <clears throat> the working title, but it's probably going to be scarier than Jason Voorhees at a campfire. Set of horror movies. Any other guy. Double chin for the win. Um, Chicago Bulls, the best team of all time. So these are our, like working titles. Some of them will stay the same. But I'm making the lines as even as I can, but I'm not patient, so they're going to be a little squiggly. And then up, up here we'll say like drums vocals, guitar one, guitar two, lead guitar. And then is every, every, every time we finish one, we put a sticker so we know what we've done and what we need to finish. <clears throat> and then at the end, we have a pretty full board that we look at that stay in my garage and get spiders on them. Let me show you some of the stickers I got for this time around. Some of them are too big for the squares, but we'll find places for them. You know, got a Dwight Schrute. These are my office ones. I just cut out their heads, actually. Look at that. Look at all these Dwights. Michael Scott, you know, Game of Thrones, stickers. Mm -hmm. The Red Witch, she'll get you. Walking Dead, Hogwarts. Anyway, so put the stickers on there, boom. And then we know at the end. So, what else is up? All right, so um, a lot of drummers in particular are particular about different things they use when they play, whether it's uh, you know wearing certain kind of clothes or whatever. Shoes is a huge thing. A lot of drummers are very particular about shoes. Um, I'm kind of the same, so I always try to use uh, smaller shoes, if you want to call it, but these are going to be my, um, my special, uh, I guess my good luck shoes, complete with a hole built in. That hole goes all the way through, all the way through. My toe will be in there. I. I guess if it's a good day, it's going to be because I'm going to have a hole in my sock. Um, so we'll see if it works. The other one's totally fine. It's just this one. That's that good old uh, kick pedal for you. So lots of that going on in this record. We'll make that hole even, uh, even bigger probably.